Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Team Comp Tuesday, the series where every Tuesday we talk about a different team, be it a for fun team or a more meta team. This week we are going to be showing off the international team, which is a Zhangling base team using Child to constantly um, allow Zhangling to vaporize with his crazy Hydro application. This is Child's main use, his, his generally his best team. Um, and generally the the reason you would want this character is to play this team. Uh, Child is a bit of a different character compared to a lot of the other characters as he kind of is like, uh, as he is a pretty flexible rotation time. His E skill basically allows him to apply tons of hydro application. Um, but at the cost of the longer that you stay in the transform, the longer the cooldown is of the skill. But what this means is you can do, extend rotations, and it means that you can like just keep autoing on him, for example, to do more damage, uh, to finish a chamber or something like that. And it, it lets the team be a bit more flexible, and personally, I think it's quite fun and quite unique for a character. So I personally find this to be one of the more enjoyable teams of the game. He's also a very powerful team, a very meta team, um, yeah, very much in the frame of a team like Raiden National, which is a team we haven't covered yet, but we will eventually get to. That is uh, a super powerful team that uses very much the same style of units as this team. Uh, the, the the kind of the main difference between the two teams is that this this uh, formation of the team essentially lets you uh, use Jing Cho for another team. So you could play something like Sucrose Taser from our previous week, or even use him. Uh, to have a freeze team of some sort with someone like Ayaka from last week's uh, video. But I hope you enjoy. Um, this is definitely the this team is definitely not for everybody. Um, this team basically hinges on your enjoyment of Child as a unit. If you like him, you like his kind of style of gameplay, um, then this is this is the way to go with him. But if you don't necessarily like him, then this team I wouldn't force like I wouldn't force yourself to roll for child just because this team is very good even if you are a very kind of meta player as there are other options nowadays but if you like child and you want to roll him this is a very powerful team you can use him in and it's a very fun team uh to play and a very satisfying team to get good at using First up here is Child, just a quick brief overview of how he works for anybody that doesn't know. He essentially has two forms, melee and ranged. He goes into melee by hitting his E. He can stay in it for a period of time, and the longer he stays into it, the longer the recharge of the skill is. While he's in melee, he does Hydra damage with every hit, and he also uh, applies Riptide, which is essentially like a proc on enemies that can be popped to do AoE Hydra damage, and since multiple enemies can have this on him at once, it means that he does a lot more damage the more enemies there are. Still decent in single target, but it gets pretty crazy in AoE. His burst also has two forms, a melee and a ranged component. Generally, you just end up using the ranged er, component as it gives 20 energy back to allow you to ult again on your next rotation, but the melee can be used as a massive nuke as it does have a very, very high uh, damage ratio. Now for weapons. Any 5-star like crit weapon will be okay on him um, if you have them. Uh, also, Battle Pass or Black Leaf are completely fine if you have them. Um, for free to play, the Inazuma craftable bow is all right, but I would. This is probably one of the only situations where I would ever say maybe you should pick up a Black Cliff weapon because his free to play options are pretty meh, and Black Cliff is, Black Cliff and Rust are pretty comparable, um, especially a high refinements on Rust. Rust actually tends to be a little bit overrated due to its passive seeming really good, uh, because 
because E counts as uh, normal attacks, normal charge attacks, so it bumps up the damage of it. But because Riptide is actually a significant portion of his damage, it ends up doing less than people originally think, or naturally would think. This is also the reason why you don't necessarily have to run four piece Heart of Depths. It looks really good, but at the end of the day, if you have better substats on a different set, I would run the different set. Um, I would definitely try to get two piece Heart of Depths, and then any of the two piece attack sets are going to be fine if you can't get a four piece Heart of Depths. Main stats on artifacts, very standard. Attack on sands, hydro on goblet, crit rate or crit damage on the hat talents, E and ultimate. You can level normal as sometimes you do charge attack as filler. Alright, next up is Zhangling for weapons. The catch is your probably your best option. Some of the five stars are competitive, but considering you get this for free and this weapon is basically tailor-made for her. I would just use it. Um, other options, Dragon's Bane is fine. If you need your catch for Raiden or something like that, uh, Favonius could be all right. Any of the crit weapons work. Deathmatch, Black Cliff, five stars, completely fine. Artifacts, basically always Emblem. Um, this is because she wants a good amount of energy recharge, so the four piece of uh, effect is pretty good, and the two piece giving her some energy recharge is nice. It means you don't have to fight it in your substats. For artifacts, uh, main stats, crit rate of crit damage on helmet, pyro damage on goblet, and your sands will change based on what your weapon is. So with an energy recharge weapon, you can use either an attack or an elemental mastery sands, whatever you have better stats on. And for a crit based weapon, you'll probably end up using an energy recharge. Generally, you want to aim for about somewhere in the realms of 180-ish uh, energy recharge to 200 just to be safe um that's about where you want to be for talents you want to level up pyronado as it is basically the reason she's good because the skill is busted and gulba you can level up as well because gulba can do some relatively decent damage Alright, next up is the Edemo slot in the team. Uh, there's actually two options here, so we'll talk about both real quick. Um, Kazuha is generally the one I prefer, as the it is easier to double squirrel. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But it's easier to do that tactic with Kazuha, so therefore I prefer Kazuha. Um, but we will talk about Sucrose as well, as Sucrose is a very viable option and just requires some slight modifications. Um, weapons favonius is by far his best weapon uh you can use the iron sting i don't even have it built on this account but you can use an iron sting if you want uh, but i would almost always recommend a favonius sword if you have it so kazuo can burst uh as much as possible because his burst is actually quite a bit of damage um you could definitely use it during filler to like constantly apply something like uh hydro or pyro and then either vaporize with someone like bennett or uh, child's charge attacks uh during downtime or you can just use it mid rotation for the damage um for artifacts always for viridescent venner uh this is basically the reason nemo units are good energy recharge on all of them uh ideally if you do have the favonius you do want to get some crit rate in substats if you can uh, of course, and besides that, some ener any energy recharge you get will also be good for his ultimate. For talents, you basically need to level them all up equally. Um, I actually need to go through and farm for his talents still in this account. But, yeah, level them up equally since all of them are important. Um, his E actually uses his normal attack for the plunge modifier, so you do need to level up both. Uh, if you want to level just one skill, his burst is probably his most important damage skill. Alright, next up is Sucrose, who is the other optional, uh, is the other Enemo you can mainly use besides Kazuha. Uh, for weapons, Sack Fragments is good. 
or uh, Thrilling Tales. If you're using Thrilling Tales, just make sure you snapshot the buff onto Zhangling or Yu ult. Um, Sack Trazix is just nice for consistency grouping and uh, it gives her more elemental mastery. Artifacts, same thing. Iridescent Venom, elemental mastery, elemental mastery, elemental mastery. Uh, you don't really have to worry about crit or energy recharge as much as Kazuha. Talents, uh, kind of just E and ultimate you can level up for her. She's very comparable to Kazuha, it's just that the setup's a little bit easier on Kazuha, so I personally prefer Kazuha in this team, and also I use Sucrose in another team. Also, just a side note, all Anemo characters, you generally want to bring them to 90 of 90, since um, Swirl Damage, actually, level is one of the main things you use to calculate level and Elemental Mastery. So in order to get the most value out of them, you want to level them to 90. All right, and last but certainly not least is Benny Boy. For weapons, generally any energy recharge or high base attack weapon is the way to go. Festering Desire is a good four star if you have it. The new craftable from uh, Sumeru is actually very good. I don't have it yet on this account, but I do plan on getting it and building it. It's very good for Bennett as it has a very high base attack, has an energy recharge substat. I believe even gives a little bit of, it's either elemental mastery or attack that you can pick up on another character, so quite strong. Any 5 star weapon is good because of high base attack, Aquila probably being the best because I believe it has the highest base attack, but yeah, basically any high base attack weapon and if you can, find energy recharge as a substat. If you're completely free to play, you could always use prototype Rancor, but now that we have that Sumer craftable, I would definitely just recommend getting that. It's a little bit of a slog to get it. You got to do a lot of stuff, but it is worth it in the end. For artifacts, you want him on a four-piece Noblesse uh, to give the buff to your Zhangling just to make her do more damage. Uh, for stats, you can either go one of two ways. I believe, yeah, I have HP, HP, Energy Recharge. You basically always want Energy Recharge on Sands. The other two options are HP or damage. I actually would recommend building for damage, like just build pyro and crit. I just don't really have extra uh, good artifacts on this account, so that's why I have him built as HP HP right now. For talents, uh, his ultimate is the main skill you care about, but you will be spamming his E to get jangling some energy back, so leveled up, it's probably worth it. Doesn't cost that much. But definitely his ultimate is worth leveling up as this is basically the reason the unit's good as it's insane healing, insane damage, bonus, cleanse, it's everything you want. Alright, real quick I'm just going to show off how you can double swirl with this team to get both Hydro and Pyro Shred. So you lead with Child E and then Bennett Alt and then you hold Kazuha E. And you should, if you did it correctly have double swirled so yeah so see i have the pyro damage bonus and the hydro damage bonus and this also means that both hydro and pyro res are down it's a little bit harder to do on sucrose i actually can't really do it super well but it is possible on her you just have to use um like an auto attack on her before you swap to bennett and then e while you're on bennett in order to get the double swirl but this tech is worth knowing because this can actually increase the damage output of this team by a pretty significant margin um, if you learn how to pull it off. Alright, we're going to do a rough rotation showcase now. So we lead with Childy, Bennett Burst, Double Swirl, play our Bennett Alt. Get our jangling going. Ult on child. Generally, you want to ult in melee, or sorry, in range, not melee there. But I messed up, so we're just gonna go through. Generally, go until NATO drops, and then you're basically just funneling NATO off cooldown. In the meantime, you can do stuff like drop a swirl, get a charge attack on child. And once all your skills are back up, use Bennett Burst. Drop your Kazuha stuff. Ult on Jangling, and then you'd go back into Child. Ideally a ranged burst, go back into melee. Do like four or five auto attack strings, generally doing N3Cs. So three autos plus charged. 
That was kind of rough, but yeah, this team takes quite a bit of practice to get comfortable with, and I'm still not exactly the most comfortable with it. But whenever you, the advantage of a team like this is, as you can see, because of the downtime, you can kind of slide things back and forth depending on like if the enemy has mechanics you need to dodge, if the enemy has certain uh, vulnerability phases, you can slide the rotation back and forth in order to maximize damage uptime. Well, thanks for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be doing next week, but we will be back next week. Um, and the week after that, actually, let's double check because I want to do Sino. Ooh. Next week might might be Sino. I'm not sure. Um, it might be the week after that might actually be Sino. I'm not sure. But I'm really excited for Sino. He's the next character I'm really looking forward to. So definitely gonna be doing an episode on him the first tuesday after he's out so look forward to that uh, and if not we'll have another team but i want to thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day